Welcome back. Thank you for tuning in to learn about preparing financial statements. Be sure to check out our other videos in this series. By the end of this video, you will understand when and how to prepare financial statements as well as the purpose of different financial statements. Previously, we talked about how accounting provides an explanation about business transactions in financial terms to serve different users. We know that accounting is a process of recording, organizing, and presenting financial transactions to different users in an organization. There are three key questions everyone wants to understand. How much wealth was created? What is the accumulated wealth of the organization? What was the cash movement? These questions are answered by preparing the income statement, balance sheet, and cash flow statement, respectively. Once these financial statements are prepared, they serve users in a variety of ways, such as interpreting day-to-day -day transactions and reducing uncertainty about an organization's performance. They show what resources are owned or owed by an organization and inform about the finances and availability of its funds. But when do you need to prepare financial statements? They can be done at different time intervals, for example, monthly, quarterly, and annually. For internal purposes, organizations can prepare financial statements as many times as they need to. But for external purposes, it's most commonly done on an annual basis. We call this annual period a fiscal year. The statements of income and cash flows provide insights about an organization's business for the entire year, while the statement of financial position provides a snapshot at a given time, usually the end of the year. In a previous video, you learned that senior leadership and management is responsible for preparing financial statements. They do this with support of their accounting and finance teams, which typically involve the CFO, SFO, financial officers, bookkeepers, and others. It is their responsibility to implement the full accounting cycle. All information pertaining to an organization flows in a systematic way. When an event is recognized as a transaction, it signals the first step in the preparation of financial statements. As soon as a transaction occurs, it gets captured in a respective journal. There could be a variety of journals depending on the type of organization, but all journals are listings of transactions relevant to that journal. From there, the information travels into ledgers, which are books of original entry and where different accounts pertaining to an organization are drawn up. At the end of each period, these accounts are closed and the listing of balances is shown in what's known as a trial balance. Because of the revenue and expense recognition principles, the accounts in the trial balance often need to be adjusted. Once adjustments are made, we are ready to prepare the complete set of financial statements, which includes the income statement, followed by a balance sheet, and a cash flow statement. It also includes statement of changes in retained earnings and notes to financial statements. Now, the accounting books are closed for the period and reviewed or audited by an independent auditor, if applicable. One of the most important financial statements is the Statement of Income. Its other names include Income Statement, Statement of Operations, Statement of Comprehensive Income, or Profit and Loss Statement. The overarching purpose of an income statement is to show how much wealth is generated by an organization during a fiscal year. It shows the relationship between revenues and expenses and the resulting profit or loss. The information in an income statement tells us how an organization is doing year after year. Investors use these reports to predict an organization's future income. Similarly, lenders use income statements to understand whether an organization can repay its loans and fulfill its obligations. Here's an example of an income statement. It is important to understand the format of an income statement because the underlying logic is universal and applies to all organizations. The name of the organization is found at the top, followed by the report title and time period for the report. Note that it says, for the year ended. It means this report explains the revenues and expenses for the entire year of 2021, ending on December 31st, 2021. Each line item in this report is an account within the ledgers of this organization. The top part shows the revenues, with expenses in the middle, and resulting profits or losses on the bottom. After preparing the income statement, we work on the balance sheet, also known as Statement of Financial Position. We already know that a balance sheet helps its readers understand the accumulated wealth of an organization at a given point in time. It describes what an organization owns, owes, and the investment from its owners. It helps users understand whether an organization is reliant on its owner's monies or if it is borrowing from others. 
It brings everything together in the form of a basic accounting equation, which says assets are equal to liabilities and equity. Let's take a closer look at our balance sheet. Once again, the name of the organization and the type of report are found at the top. But instead of stating for the year ended, it says as at December 31st, 2021, because a balance sheet provides a snapshot of what an organization owns or owes at a given time, not throughout the year. In the main body, we start by listing assets, which are usually broken into current asset, items that last one year or less, for example, cash in hand or in the bank, non-current or fixed asset, which are items that last for more than a year, for example, land, improvements, and buildings. Once this is done, we move to the other side of the accounting equation to the sum of liabilities and equity. We break liabilities down into current and non-current liabilities and add them to equity. As mentioned previously, equity are the resources invested in an organization by its owners. It is the sum of common stock, or the original investment of the owners, and retained earnings. Note that the sum of liabilities and equity will always be equal to assets. This is because resources supplied by the owner and non-owner are always equal to the resources that exist in the business. Next, let's look at a cash flow statement. This statement helps us understand the movement of cash from year to year providing answers to questions such as, where did cash come from during a period? How was cash used during that period? And what was the change in the cash balance? The cash flow statement also provides insights into receipts and payments made by an organization. It does this by dividing its activities into operating, investing, and financing activities. A cash flow statement helps evaluate whether enough money is being generated through regular operations to finance its investing activities. In terms of its format, the information at the top is the same as an income statement. The main body of the report organizes activities in three categories. Operating activities. This is the net balance between cash receipts and expenses incurred from day-to-day -day operations. Investing activities. This shows an organization's acquisition of long-term investments. Financing activities. This shows how an organization is raising cash to fund operations and investments. The sum of these three items is equal to the net increase or decrease in cash. By adding this to the cash available at the beginning, we can determine the amount of cash remaining at the end of a period. So what else is included in financial statements? Here are a few more items. Statement of changes in retained earnings. It explains how much of an organization's net earnings are being held back in the business and what is being distributed to the owners. Statement of changes in net assets or debt. This shows the acquisition of tangible capital assets in the accounting period, as well as other significant items that explain the change in net debt and the differences between surplus and deficit for the accounting period. Notes to financial statements provide the detailed explanations and expanded disclosures that complement reported amounts in the financial statements. We hope this video has been helpful in understanding the steps involved in the preparation of financial statements. Subscribe to our channel and find us on our socials for future tutorials. See you next time.